Tested. Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. And I'm Matt from Tested. Uh, so we're here today to talk about OS X Lion. It's uh, coming maybe tomorrow? You're a lion. Uh, I'm a li <laughs> Wow, okay, Matt Rory in <laughs> the house. Early. Um, yeah, Lion is of course the new version of Apple's OS, OS yes. X. Coming out any day now. Yes. And we have uh, a laptop here installed. The Lion is running on it even mm -hmm. as we speak. And we're going to basically run through some of the key stuff about the new OS that, that are the more interesting features. You know, unlike Snow Leopard, which was the last update, this, that was primarily a behind-the-scenes update to the, to the Mac yeah. OS. Uh, this is very feature-forward. You're seeing a lot of new UI elements, a, not, a lot of new components. It's, uh, it's, it's very different from previous versions of the OS. And in a lot of ways, it's, a, it's more iOS-y in, in some key important ways. Uh, Matt, you've used it some. What do you think about, about OS X Line so far? So far, I mean, it's it's been a really, really decent upgrade. I mean, it's one of those things where it's just so cheap that I would almost recommend it's kind of a no-brainer. Like 30 um, bucks, it's 30 hard to bucks. say no. Yeah, but you can only upgrade so. from the Mac App Store yeah. within Snow Leopard. And so if you're on Leopard, a lot of people are. You have to pay the 30 bucks to upgrade to Snow Leopard and then and another, another 30 bucks to upgrade to Lion. Uh, there won't be discs in the Apple Store. Uh, this is it. This is this is uh, this is uh, Lion. Uh, I'm going to get all the way out here to the desktop. Looks more or less like OS X. Yeah, I moved my dock over to the right, but you can put it wherever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, of course, the first thing you'll notice is, uh, is well, let's talk about the install before we get to the, oh, yeah. the OS So itself. if you're on Snow Leopard and you have the Mac App Store, you have to update to the newest version. Yes. And you're in the Mac App Store, you select Lion, $30. And what does that take? So it's not live in the, in the App Store right now. What we actually installed, uh, this is the App Store. What we actually installed was the developer preview, which you download from a, from a website just like another piece of software. Yep. Basically, it gives you an installer. Uh, you run the installer. It pops up a wizard. And it, it was a relatively straightforward process. Like, there's no, there's no massive uh, like boot off of a CD or mm -hmm. install it on a flash drive or anything like that. You run a program. It does some stuff. It can, reboots. Can you walk away? Can you, you walk oh, away from geez. it and, and then come yeah. back and it's done? It, it, it's ridiculously simple to the point where um, I started the install process, left the house, and when I came back, um, it didn't even ask for anything. It, yeah. it actually just finished. You're there's just no, in Lion. Yeah, there's no welcome screen. You, you um, boot up and you get a new login screen. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll show you right now. It's, is there it looks new, like this. Is there a new wallpaper? Uh, yes, there is a new wallpaper. Oh, there's um, a bunch there's of new wallpaper. wallpaper. Yeah, there's a couple. So this is the new login screen. You, know, you, you come back to this. It's, it was really straightforward. Same password as the old install. I didn't even bother doing a clean install, which is, yep. is unusual. Um, and, and this is the, de well, the desktop, actually, I mean, I can change the desktop background back to one of the defaults. I wish Tested was a default I, I do. That would be pretty rad. But I think this is the default for at least the developer preview. Yep. Wouldn't surprise me if it changes between now and then. Um, the, first thing, the first thing I did when I fired this up is I noticed that there were two new icons right up here by my finder, the launch pad and mission control. Uh, mission control is super fantastic, uh, especially for laptop users. That's, that's the biggest like, visual interface, UI change. Yeah. In so for, for those of you that used Expose before, uh, those were all the fancy window effects that you know, showed your desktop and revealed all the applications. Mm -hmm. It's all been rolled into mission control. There is no Expose anymore. No. So the default, for example, when you're, you have a mouse plugged in and you hit the, uh, the thumb button, yep. which separates all your windows, the Expose, yep. that's gone, replaced by this. Mission control. Yeah. Mind you, you can still use some of those old gestures. Like you can still have access to, you know, show your desktop. You can still kind of show all your windows. It's just it's yeah. been changed a little bit. So let's go over mission control. So yeah. So the benefit of this is it combines expose and spaces in a really pretty seamless way. Um, the neat thing, like I, I've had virtual desktops on machines for years, and I never actually used it because it was always kind of a pain in the ass. Never really worked exactly the way I wanted it to. It was never, never kind of the feature that I wanted. It, it, just, it just wasn't. It was too inconvenient to use. Mm -hmm. So what this does is you can drag individual applications up to other desktops. Oh. If you want to have, say, a desktop that's just for web browsing, you know, here's my web browser. Open mul multiple tabs. Yeah. Happens. I, or instances. Uh, multiple instances. They go into different. You mean different, multiple spaces? Windows. Multiple windows of like, oh. the web browser. Uh, so. Uh, yes. Okay, so here's I'm making I'm going to make a whole bunch of windows. You can have different ones on different ones. So if you want to have a web browser that's just for Gmail and you want to put it on its own space, boom, you can do that. Um, the neat thing is once you have stuff on spaces, you can scroll back and forth between them with just gestures. So I'm I'm I have three fingers on the trackpad. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm scrolling back and forth between spaces. I guess I'll allow RDO to work, um, <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, and, and it's just it just rolls back and forth between the different spaces in a very seamless way. Did you use spaces before? before? I, I, no. I never have. Yeah, I, it's, it's kind of one of those features that's been kind of baked in and been known. I mean, unless you're like a big like, like lots of desktop user, big power user, yeah. running tons of apps. But now they're kind of forcing you to kind of 
acknowledge it. So, so the thing about expose has always been it makes uh, it makes it makes it easier to manage a large number of windows, even if you're on a small screen. You, you mm -hmm. know, if you're on a 30-inch panel, there's no challenge to having 10 or 15 windows open. But when you're on a on a you it's know like a 13-inch laptop, maybe an 11-inch MacBook Air. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a 1280 by 800 screen. It's a relatively low-resolution small screen. So if you have a whole bunch of windows open, it is a pain in the ass. Um, and and this makes it just much simpler, so that you don't have to even think about it as you're going from from space to space your, on, your on the web. Are also in a space. Yes. Dashboard. So and you can scroll back and forth between that, which actually, to me, using the laptop, it's made this whole thing much easier. I mean, you can see me moving my hand back and forth, and literally, it is, it's become an innate. Is, is that a one to one? Slot? It is. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it's not like it, once you sh start it on no, no. switch. No, no, no. You can come over and peek and then go back. Look, you look, can. Look, look. The thing. The thing that I'm not sure about. Okay. Are you done? No. <laughs> okay. You can do this later on your own time. Uh, the thing that you can't do is rearrange the spaces, which is, feels a little bit weird to me. Or at least I haven't figured out how to do you, it yet. You can't do it automatically. I mean, the way that Lion works is it allows you, it'll automatically rearrange them based on what you've used most recently or most frequently, which oh, okay. is kind of, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. It's, it's someplace that I kind of feel like I would rather have control. But on yeah. the other hand, it's easy enough to switch between spaces. And in, yeah. in the real world, I find myself using like three spaces uh, for the most part. Now, the other big addition is the full screen browsing. Uh, or just well, full screen apps. Back to spaces. Okay. For example, the widgets, the dashboard. I like the overlay. I like having the dashboard fly in because I just use it to glimpse the calendar, to use the calculator. Can I have that still overlay on top of? I think um, that I the that? dashboard button still works. No, no, you can totally have it overlaid. You just have to go into system preferences and you can it choose whether to have it as the overlay or have it as, another as space. a separate space. Yeah. The default will be its own space yes. though. So. But now the now the uh, the 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 dashboard. What was the dashboard? I guess this is the expose That's button the expose on the laptop. Button. Uh, takes you straight to mission control now. And the dashboard button still rolls you straight over rolls the dashboard. The space. Uh, between the spaces, your desktop icons remain the same, or is it a clear... Uh, uh, so the desktop icons do remain the same between spaces, which I think is a little bit weird. I'm trying to remember what the gesture is for... Oh, that's the wrong one. The show desktop. Yeah, what's the show desktop it's, gesture? It's I can never. three I've, fingers, thumb, and out. There okay, there we go. go. So, yeah. so yeah, the desktop icons, if you look, that's one desktop. Here's another. They, they remain still the have same. still same folders. Uh, Although you can change desktops between space, change backgrounds between spaces. So, if I want to have, uh, you know, a testicles logo here, oh. I can definitely do that. And you can, you can even you can have up to ten spaces. Uh, I think you. I, I haven't reached the limit. I can't imagine why you would want ten spaces. Because I, like I want a wallpaper that stretches across ten different spaces. Oh. <laughs> Something amazing. Uh. Yeah, but see, that wouldn't make sense because then when your spaces get rearranged automatically, oh. your wallpaper is going to get all janky. Oh, Apple. Yeah, so <laughs> different wallpaper for each. Uh, yeah, Googly moogly. The yeah, these the gestures. The gesture for getting the desktop clear has, is eluding me. <laughs> it's it's like there's not enough room for four of my big fat fingers. Why don't we on, talk about those now? On while the we're on the... um, well, before we do that, yeah. I want to talk about um, uh, uh, full screen. Full screen mode, because that this is this is for laptop users. Again, it's one of those features that I think is pretty useless for uh, somebody who has a big panel, a 27, 24 inch panel even. 30. But on a small screen like this, being mm -hmm. able to go full screen and and get that space that you use for the dock, get the bottom and top edges back. It even hides the menu until you mouse up there, uh, so you can uh, you can actually browse. And the neat thing, so I'm using. How did you activate this? So this to activate this. You click a, uh, I guess Finder doesn't do it, but uh, iTunes does, so iTunes is running. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's arrows in the top right corners. Ah. This is something that apps have to support in some minor way. So uh, not all apps, like uh, developers have to build, build it in. Yeah. yeah, so for example, Chrome has the, has, well, let me show you how it's supposed to work first. Yeah. You go to Safari, uh, you click the, the top right corners, and then when you want to get back out, there's a, there's a unminimize, unmaximize button in the top right corner. Full screen apps in OS X is something I've wanted for a long time, especially for laptops. Mm -hmm. This is the best implementation. I, I've, never, I've never been a full screen browser with web browsers. They you really don't need that green plus button anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, but but what this does is it makes it go full screen. And the nice thing is, full screen apps get their own space. Oh. So when I go over here to iTunes and make it full screen, there's going to be an, an iTunes space now too, and it'll be let's see where's Safari. So, so Safari has a space, iTunes has a space, and it, it's good for when you want to switch back and forth uh, when you have stuff that you leave running all the time in the background. People really like space. 
Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I, I especially see like when uh, I don't know I don't know what the status of the latest version of Photoshop and the Creative mm -hmm. Suite stuff is, but those types of apps where you really live in a whole canvas are going to be really good for full screen mode, especially on a smaller screen. Mm -hmm. It works nicely for the browser too, and I mean just to show you, you, you will will cut back and forth between big and little, um, but when you're watching say a video of some nerds on the internet. Oh my goodness. Then uh, you know you can go full screen in the browser. You could always you do this. You went full I guess. screen in a full screen I'm, app. I, yo, dog. I yeah. This is a bad idea. We're we're through the looking glass. But you know you, you, you basically it, this is this full screen stuff is for Final Cut, Creative Suite, and notebooks. And when you demaximize, it just tosses it back to the other the space. Back to the, the space it was in before. I yeah. think what the big deal is is that this has actually always been possible in OS X. It's just that the integration with spaces, I think, is what really makes it worth it. Yeah. Um, uh, so, okay, so the other big, the other, the other, I said there were two icons that jumped out at me at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. This one is kind of shit. The rocket frankly. ship. Rocket yeah, the, ship. Rocket ships are always awesome, right? Rocket ship on a CD. No. No, no they are not. No. Uh, this is, uh, this is Launchpad. This is the, the iOSing of OS X. I find this to be an interminably bad feature. How are these organized? Uh, it seems like they're alphabetized yep. after you get to... So this is the stuff that comes with the Mac, the first page. Mm -hmm. And then you scroll to the right, and these are all the things that I've installed over the years. You have a ton of apps. Um, the Programs. The interesting, Can you rearrange? Uh, I believe so. Is it, it, do it, they wiggle? They do wiggle. Yeah, yeah they, they wiggle. wiggle. It, it, I mean, you can make folders, the whole things. things. The thing is... Uh, you can only, I'm trying to find something I've actually installed from the App Store. Yeah. I think Delicious Library Twitter. falls in that category. Oh. See, this is um, not helpful because on a desktop, you want to use Spotlight Twitter. or Quicksilver Twitter? and hit Command yeah. Space. Okay. Do a search for your, your programs. That's how yeah. you launch them typically. So th these, I, it makes sense on something a smaller screen like it's it's like, a dopey idea for this. Right. For on, on a phone where you have 16 icons or a tablet where you have like 20 icons, y it makes sense. You're visually in your head, you know. This is an app that you have on the top right-hand corner. Here, I'm not going to remember, Chatter is in the third row, third right. icon to the right. So the other side of this is that the only apps that you can actually manage this way, the only ones you can uninstall from this space, are the ones that you've installed with the App Store. So Photosync and Twitter both have Xs, which means I can uninstall them from, from Launchpad. This is a, I, I don't think this is a good feature, I mean, at, at all. I, I think it's... Uh, I, I can't even get back out of it. I just launched Skype. This is, this is a disaster. <laughs> um, I was really hoping that, you know, when you uninstall applications from Launchpad, it would also uninstall maybe user data or, like, something that, you know, is bundled with it, but it doesn't. It just deletes the app. It just deletes it the just, app. It deletes so it's, the it's app. basically it's, an iOS app on your desktop. Yeah, though. it's it's for, And then especially, I don't see the value over using something like the jump lists that are at, you know, that live in the dock. Okay. Uh, so worth mentioning, we have intern Nick on the chat right now. So if you're in the watching the live stream, Nick is sitting right over there and... Uh, send your questions to him. I think he's just at questions on on the chat, uh, and the, we have a we have somebody on the phone standing by. Ooh. That number is I think four one five five zero eight thirty nine seventy five. So uh, we'll be taking questions. If you want to see specific stuff, we're going to keep running down features here. Think about what you want to ask. If and, you want to Skype in, you can call. also Skype us. Whiskey Media, one word. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Norm. Uh, so Launchpad's kind of a bummer, and here's why Launchpad's a bummer. You hit <laughs> Command Space, and then you type what you want to launch, like Twitter. And it just launches. I'm going to do this again just so you can see it. Oh, if I want to launch, say, iMovie, I just type iMovie and it launches. Command space yeah. and then the name of the application. Extremely simple. And you don't have to do any nonsense like like scroll. I, I can't even find Launchpad. I'm getting rid of this right now. It's, it's, I don't like this. I'm removing it. I'm never going to look at it again. While we're at it, I'm getting rid of the mission control button, too. Because three fingers and up is just, why would you not do yeah. that? Mm -hmm. So, what okay. gestures from Snow Leopard were replaced with new gestures? Uh, Let's talk about those now. Well, so the, the, the expose uh, has obviously been replaced with mission control. That, that's a, I think that's Three good. fingers up. Yes, yep. three fingers up. Um, the, uh, the scrolling, they've changed uh, by default. You can change it back, of course. So, I'm going to go to the home page of Tested here. And normally, in the old days, you would take two fingers and you would scroll down to go down the page, yep. which is perfectly <laughs> natural. Yes. Now you do it like you do on the iPad or the iPhone, and you push it as if, as if I was reaching out to the screen and touching a piece of paper to push it up and down. So it's it's a the one one to one. It is still one to one, just okay. the same as it was before, but it is it is it is not a this is not a good thing. Uh, try it. 
I mean, your your brain will get used to it, but it's one of those things where why why mess with what we've been doing for I, years? It's it's not even it's not even that. It's the push. The natural motion makes sense when you're touching the screen. Oh, yeah. it's inverted. It's, it's inverted. inverted. It's playing like like playing a first person shooter yes. with inverted mouse. Yeah. I do not like. It's called reverse scrolling, and when you <sighs> boot up Lion for the first time, it'll be the first thing that it tells you about is hey, Lion has this method of scrolling. Here's how to use it. But in an, in a true Apple way. They've called this natural scrolling. Oh. So by, by turning this off, <laughs> I am unnatural. And I'm happy with that. That's okay with me. Um, uh, other stuff, that, you know, a lot, the normal mouse stuff has stayed the same. Uh, double tap with two is, fingers. Is that also the same, the same on like the Magic Mouse? Uh, I am, I'm pretty sure that it's almost identical. I think it's, it's the same identical. across okay. the board, yeah. It's got to be. Um, the, the zoom and all that stuff, always the same. You can do the, the smart zoom just like you do on iOS. Yep. Uh, actually, am I in Safari? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. And the most fingers we'll need to use it's, for it's a finicky. for a yeah. gesture is four or five. Uh, five. There's there are a couple of five finger gestures. So we'll go over here and show you wow. those. It's in, like the no, Gillette all gestures. gestures. Yeah, the Gillette thumb blades of gestures. I guess thumb three. And, that's only four. That's thumb isn't there and a thumb fingers. and four fingers? No. There. What you can do no, is you can that, rebind. That looks like thumb and four fingers to me. Well, maybe it works. I don't know. But I mean, it only says three fingers there. Mm. I can't wait today. We have six finger gestures. I have I have six fingers. There are six fingers. The problem with the three finger and the thumb gesture is that when you go onto the uh, touchpad to kind of you know pinch out or pinch in, it it feels like you know if you don't do it properly, then it's as if you're doing just a three finger push up or down. So half of the time you're going to invoke Launchpad or you're going to invoke Mission Control. It's it's a bit of a crapshoot. So uh, one of the things that is good is the multiple. Uh, uh, so the, three fingers up opens Mission Control. Yeah. Three fingers down, if you turn mm -hmm. it on, shows you all the open windows in an existing yes. program. This is something I hardly ever used in really? oh, in previous versions of OS X because you couldn't do a gesture with it, and I wasn't going to bind a mouse button or something right. like that to it. But in this, it's basically making the, it a gesture the is old great. expose, but just within this one program. Yes. So really good for web browsers when you have multiple windows open. It doesn't work for tabs, though, so it's only open windows. You know what kind of baffles me is go to Safari. One of the, hold on, before we do this, one of the things that frustrates me is uh, some gestures are three fingers. Some places, three fingers scroll left and right, like between spaces. That, yes. that is something that became very quickly natural to me. However, another dopey thing about Launchpad, it's two fingers to scroll from side to side. Which not configurable doesn't make any sense. You can, I think, you can change it to three fingers, but there are unintended consequences to doing that. Well, I'm never going to use Launchpad anyway. Right. I know there were a number of apps for Snow Leopard and Leopard that would actually let you change the way that a lot of those gestures work. And I think once those are, you know, updated and released for Lion, you'll have a lot more control. Well, that's one of the benefits of having a yeah, a, yeah a pretty configurable core. Okay, what are we doing here? Now, what you can do is this. This kind of baffles me. So what you can do is you can take something like this and three fingers. Oh, the lookup. It defines it. I don't understand why that's bound to a gesture. I like that. Do you like that? Would yeah. you actually define words by double tapping them with three fingers? Never, but I think it's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool, but a little dopey. What, is, what does Wednesday mean? What is, yeah. Do you have to double tap? Even real no, uh, three fingers, double tap. Let's see if you can do it. Come on, Smith. So close. Yeah, I'm going to get in here now. All right, show month's done. This, is, this is, makes wow. for great TV, guys. This is, there we go. Your mouse has to be a cursor for it to work. Interesting. Wow. The day before. Yeah, let's let's wow. uh, let's see if Nick has any questions from the chat. Nick, how's it going in there? Uh, it's going well. Uh, Peacemaker asks. Um, so some of the little UI things look nice, like the rounded rectangle buttons and all that. Mm -hmm. What are some of the little features, like the little tweaks that that you like? In this release, one of the big changes for this, and this is if you have i uh, i life installed, mm -hmm. you probably saw this with the update that came out earlier this week. A lot of the, they've gone through and, and made a lot of the UI consistent. So if you look here, uh, this these these side icons used to all be colored. Um, other things, other small things that have changed. So they they leached all the color out of the side icons. That applies to iLife as well. So in iTunes and iMovie, if you look over here, it's grayscale. Uh, iTunes is all grayscale it's side all icons chrome, now. Like brushed aluminum. They're also bigger too, which I'm a little sad. You can't change the size of because I, I liked having everything glanceable. Are you sure you can't change the size? Of I those? haven't been able to find it. Okay. So maybe I'm wrong. But um, please prove me wrong. Yeah, the 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 made, making the the app open and close things. Some of the stuff I don't like. I think taking the the colors out of the and big and and small and and close buttons is uh, inconsistent. Although this is one of those places that I think OS X's UI design has always been kind of janky. So uh, yeah. maybe that's not the best. It's a example. stoplight. What red, <laughs> yellow, green? Yeah, it, it, but they what, never red, that way. Red closes and yellow makes things. I, I does, didn't make sense to me. <laughs> yep. Um, the, uh, this is. For the most part, aside from the launchpad gaff, 
Uh, it seems like a lot of the smaller stuff is is pretty good. I think FaceTime is built in now. Mm -hmm. Is that is that? I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, since I upgraded my Snow Leopard install, it's unclear whether this is the again uh, something that will wow, not I, really use. Not Whoa. A, not a. This is not a flattering lighting situation <laughs> when you're on a webcam. Oh We're closing that and walking away. Um, I, what else, anything else that you can think of, Matt? What are the big What are the big features? Other. Big one. So, you want to talk about AirDrop? Uh, yeah, we can oh. talk about AirDrop a little bit. This is something you actually use. Yeah. This is something. This is something I would actually use. It's uh, so the the idea behind this is it's a, a feature that lets you see. Oh look, hey Matt's here. Hey. Um, you can easily transfer files between computers. So I'm going to uh, open up a new Finder window within a network. Yeah, within a, within well, actually it's not even within a network. It's, it's just within, nearby. Yeah, within range. Oh, yeah. So, so it's using ad hoc connections. It's, yeah, that's exactly it. It seems to be like time slicing your Wi-Fi because it works over Wi-Fi. Now, can you browse? But doesn't the kill your Wi-Fi. When you say time slicing, I'm um, sorry. Can you can you browse the internet and do other things? Yes, files are yes, you can. Okay. So I'm going to transfer. This is a portal. This is not going to be big enough. I need something that's kind of big here. Mm. Um, podcast. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any podcast. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're just going to do this. We tested it. It works. You can still browse the internet while you're transferring a giant file. Uh, Matt, enjoy a uh, SVG of the, the tested, tested logo. logo. Uh, Nick, Thanks, can you match? Oh, thank you, sir. So yeah, it just transfers over. Uh, can you send that back to me, Matt, Nick? Can you just drag a file onto that onto that uh, the icon of me screaming in the car or possibly yawning? Mm. I, uh, I don't know where that one went, but I found a JPEG. I can send That's you. That's perfect. Sure. Hopefully, it's not pornography. Mm, probably not. It's Matt's laptop, though, so you never know. Maple leaf, maple leaf, maple leaf. Yes. Ooh. Oh, we have a call. I don't know who. Uh, I think we have Ryan from someplace indeterminate, Indiana. Ryan, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. What do you? What, what's your question about uh, OS X Lion? I just want to know what is a, a feature you guys like to see uh, from OS uh, from Lion that would go to window Windows. Oh, that's a great. That's a great question. Thanks for your call, sir. Um, I, I love the mission control stuff. The, the integration of spaces and window management, or virtual desktops and windows management is really, really awesome. Anybody, I'd, anybody set, I'd settle for expose. Yeah, well, there's yeah. kind of expose-like features, but they're not really yeah. the same. Um, Matt, anything for you? Uh, I, I actually really like the uh, the full screen spaces thing that we were demonstrating earlier. Um, yeah. If only because I you know now keep iTunes permanently locked to a space, which is kind of nice. Well, like, like a full screen thing. And and as as I've migrated from using a desktop machine with a big giant monitor to a smaller laptop all yeah. the time, having like being able to mimic that big screen experience on a laptop is has been nice. really I mean, good. There have been a bunch of features in Mac OS X that I've wanted in Windows for a while, like drag files to program icons to, launch, to open the file, yeah. uh, magic folders, but Apple's patented a bunch of this stuff. <laughs> uh, one of the things I, that I love in Windows 7 that I'd love to see come in OS 10, wait, don't do it yet, Matt, uh, is the ability to uh, uh, highlight an icon in the dock and get previews of all the windows easily, which, yeah. which you can kind of do, but it doesn't work as well as it does in Windows. I mean, I think that's, that's a, uh, like if you combine the Windows management mojo on Windows 7 and OS 10, you could have the ultimate OS, but probably that's not going to happen. Lucky for you, some we actually crazy, freaky that. monster. <laughs> yeah, we did, actually. Yeah, there's, there's an app you can download that will give you those nice little previews and jump lists and, and stuff like that. Uh, so, so here's a uh, OS 10 Lion welcome video scrolling. <laughs> I am going to hit save and open, and that's just the dialogue you get when you airdrop yep. the file to somebody else. We did like a 350 megabyte uh, video file yesterday. It worked fine. So, uh, and and as fast as a normal Wi-Fi transfer between two computers Very could speedy. be. So it was good. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know why I have a picture of Kermit the Frog and John Cleese and Jim Henson. Because it's awesome. It, it, well, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I think that came from Twitter. Um, any more questions from the chat, Nick? Uh, yeah. Conmuse wants to know, do you guys have any idea how Spaces works with multiple monitors? I haven't tried that yet. Have you? I have not had a chance, no. Uh, uh, that, that'll be interesting. No. My, my, I, well, first off, in my experience, virtual desktops become much less valuable the more monitors you have because you already have kind of two virtual desktops on separate monitors. Uh, my hunch would be, given from the way Spaces worked before, that when you scroll from space to space, it will move. There will be a distinct desktop on both Each monitors, one. and they'll all yeah. move at once. But we haven't tested it. We'll, 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 I'll do that today and so see how it works like a, the full review. Like, like, carousel, thinking, like a carousel. Oh, that would be that would be kind of cool. Yeah. I, I, I it, it's difficult. I, like I can see using some full screen apps. 
And like I, I'm curious about how full screen apps work in a multi monitor environment. I'm curious about how uh, spaces work in a multi monitor environment. I, I we'll, we'll find out, and, and there'll be more. In the now there are a bunch of other big features in OS X Line. Yes. Um, for example, autosave. Oh yeah. Yes, the autosave stuff. There's not a lot of apps that support that uh, right now. It's unclear exactly how that works, whether it's on an API level, file system level, all that. Uh, I have installed Pages though, so we can uh, we can uh, test that out and see. Let me go to a different space here. I'll go to an empty space. A lonely space. I've never used Pages before, so this is this is a new experience for me. Open. Hey. This is a space. This is a Pages document. I'm typing and saving, and now I'm going to go over here and do something stupid like force quit. Well, don't do that. Oh no! What will happen to your document? But my my work it is gone. What will we do? And uh, it looks like it might actually be gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh. Uh, yeah. So I almost wonder, like I when I was to toying around save. with it, I feel like you have to save it once, and then from there, I think it does I'm the going to uh -huh. see if this works better. Uh, when I save the document first. Boom, saving. Now, when uh, Steve Jobs was on the stage talking about this test document, uh, it seemed like it was working through the magic at a file system level, but using other apps, I know you've used this a lot, yeah. it doesn't seem to... <laughs> no! <laughs> no, close it. The cat just got on the mo on the keyboard. No, no, no you, oh, you want me to force quit yeah, again? Force quit it. Force quit. Yeah, like, I, I use a program called Write Room to do most of my writing in, and that definitely does not autosave. Um, yeah. And... Oh! oh it didn't, didn't save yourself. Did not. Uh, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I just... how frequently it, it's, it's writing to disk. It, it, it seemed like through the magic of OS X Lion, instant. it was going to be instant. Yeah. I have not had that experience so far. So uh, we will, we will. This is something we have to test more. Obviously, I mean, it's this is a relatively Oops. new build, and and we're just. You we know what we could try? We didn't want to get in trouble with the Apple monsters. So the way that it's supposed to work is that if you look at the title bar up here, you're supposed to be able to click on it yes. and get a drop down menu. I know that works in text edit if you want to. Open oh, it that. does. Okay, oh, it totally does. I never yeah. used text edit. Oh. That's the notepad of Mac OS. I know. It's okay, so this of is though. yet this another test document. I want to make that bigger? I'm going to, um, yeah. Apple and then plus plus. Oh no, no. Oh well, let's see if it saved. <laughs> it didn't save. <laughs> that that didn't work, Braga. What do you mean? Save it. I, okay. Save it. Test seventeen. And then do some other things to it. I'm going to do some other things to it just in case. Okay. okay. Now. Oh, look. It says it's been oh! edited. Okay, so this is this is how you get it. This stuff looks like it has to happen. There has to be some API hooks yeah. at the OS, at the application level into the OS oh. to fix it. Whoa. It is like oh, a Oh, hey. It's like time machine. Time. I'm going to go back to the very first version of this document which in Days of Yore, just down there. which is right there. So that was a little bit There's underwhelming. As you can version. probably understand, if you are working on a big document or essay yeah. or paper or something, this will come in handy. Script. Um, a lot more. Error script. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually lock it so it doesn't I'm, auto I'm You can lock certain revisions, yes. which is kind of neat. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like you know locking layers if you you know use Photoshop or something. And uh, I would assume that very shortly after the OS actually launches, which could be tonight, could be tomorrow, could be like three weeks from now. We don't really know. July. July. There's that still two and a half weeks of July. No, no, yeah. they said July. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll, you know, when when the iWork stuff is uh, updated to work with this, then... So that's autosave yeah, and auto versions. I, as somebody who's comfortable working in a file system, I feel like that's not that big of a feature for me. No. Um, but, you know, whatever. If you want to go back and get into old versions of your files, Really they also changed nice. uh, mail, the default mail client. Uh, yeah, I haven't actually set up the default mail client, but but let's show something cool here. And while I'm getting this going, uh, let's see if we have any questions from the chat. Yeah, we're, one question we are repeatedly getting is, do you guys recommend doing a fresh install or an upgrade? There in is general? no... Well, There's, you could do a fresh install. It seems like it would be a big pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. I've done an upgrade. Matt did an upgrade. It's been fine for the two of us. Uh, two people do not make a massive sample size, so uh, you know your mileage may vary. Anna, I'm going to should sign we... in to my Google account real real quick here, so maybe you can cut back to just us. Thank you. The, the one thing we should point out is that uh, the way that the install process works is because it's all downloaded from the App Store. Uh, Line will actually create a small little partition on your drive, uh, mm -hmm. and it'll throw all its files there. So if you ever need to reinstall or you know do any sort of time machine backup, system tools, things like that. How big uh, is that partition? I don't actually know because it does not show up in disk utility, but I 
got to guess it's only about 4 gigs. 4 it, gigs. It's got to be small. That's pretty much how big the download's going to be anyway yep. from the App Store. So make sure you have an extra 4 mm -hmm. gigs available. So, so if you if you do want a clean install, you can just reinstall, you know, restart into that and then initiate a clean install, but so one of the things that they added, and I don't actually know how to get back to it since I said I don't want to do this the first time, <laughs> um, is there's an ability, the first time I logged into my Google account, yeah. it said, hey, do you want to set up your, your other accounts, mail and mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, calendar and contacts to sync with this Google account, which was a phenomenal feature. I really wish I'd done it at the time. Um, I'm going to type in a password here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's not going to work for obvious reasons. Oh, damn it. I'm going to go again. Uh, yeah, Nick, while I'm doing this, do you want to take a question from the chat? Anybody yeah, have anything? Uh, we have a question from Vinny, actually. Oh. If, well, hey, Vinny, you could have just said it in my ear, but whatever. <laughs> he asks, I'm not going to do a Vinny impression. He asks, um, with all this gesture stuff, spaces, App Store, etc., it seems like Apple's really catering more to the laptop crowd and sort of maybe turning away from desktop and professional work station stuff. Do you think that's a, I, I a think, real trend? I think that that is a, um, yeah, I, I would say that that is a, I would yeah. not disagree with that at all. I don't think they're going to go into the Mac Pro line. I mean, they still sell a ton of iMacs, but... Their bread and butter now is really notebooks. That being said, it's not as if anything's been made worse for people who like using mice and keyboard. I mean, I have all these expose or I guess mission control buttons that are bound to my mouse, and those still work fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like anything works worse. I am uh, sync trying to get this uh, get mail to come in, and it's not seeming what to work you, right uh, now. What if you try logging in maybe under a Hotmail or a Yahoo account, something I, you haven't logged in yet? I think uh, I have a, a Yahoo account. Oh, I have a Yahoo account. I have a Yahoo account. Okay, let's go, to, let's go to Yahoo. I don't even think I've... I've never, I've never been to mail on this Yahoo account before, so this, is gonna be interesting. this will be exciting for everyone. Is it mail.yahoo.com? Yeah. Uh, while I'm doing this, I, I, to answer Vinny's question in more depth, I, yes, they're selling a lot more laptops than they are desktops at this point, uh, and they're selling more iMacs than they are uh, Mac, uh, Pros. Mac Pros. Mm -hmm. Mac Pros are very niche. So is this supposed to be the last one? Oh, here we go. go. Okay, oh, so, get, yeah, cut back over here. This is fantastic. Uh, would you like to use mail.app, iCal.app, and iChat.app with your Will Smith? Uh, don't, you can send all the email you want here. I have literally never logged into this account. <laughs> I'm going to set all this stuff up. It's just happening magically. I don't have to know settings or any of that stuff. This, is, this I think, is super cool. Uh, it's not a very complex feature uh, you know, for power users who already know all this stuff. But for, for normal people who are buying a Mac for the first time, oh, that's my wife. <laughs> Hi, honey. Uh, I'm just going to close iChat now. Sorry about that. And, uh, yeah. So, it doesn't seem to be showing up in the accounts folder here, though, which is a little bit weird. Anyway, uh, this is, so that, that, yeah, that's that stuff. Mail. How's mail different at all? I, I haven't used a desktop mail client in a long time. Matt, have you used the mail app at all? No, nope, I'm a Thunderbird user. Oh, wow. I'm so, sorry. you do use desktop client? I do. Thunderbird. Yeah, that's because I have multiple mail accounts. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, more on mail someplace else. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, do you use a desktop mail? Nope. Yeah. Now, let's go to full screen mode real quick. Because apparently on this mode, it makes it look a little bit more like the iPad version. Uh, I guess we have no it mail to actually check it doesn't look with. at all like the iPad version. I don't know. Um, hmm. This is okay. just the word on the street. Good talk, guys. Nick, any more questions from the chat? Um, yeah. How, how do uh, some of these new gestures work when you're using a magic mouse? Mm -hmm. uh, I would assume not particularly well... Uh, when you're talking about, oh, this is my Google Calendar. It all got imported in automatically. Uh, not particularly well when you're talking about a uh, something that's very small, especially if you have hands that are my size or larger. Um, are you, you a fan of? Uh, are you a fan of what they've done with Calendar now? Well, what happened there? Yeah, see, it's it's kind of doing a. Uh, it's taking that it old school paradigm and trying to shoehorn it into the uh, yeah. virtual calendar. This is one of those things that annoys me oh. just on on iOS. No, just in general yeah. about technology when you're looking at uh, when, when you take a modern digital interface and try to make it a, a, a paper analog, yeah. I, I find that that's a little dopey and kind of precious. Apparently um, address book is even worse if you want to open that up. Yeah, I can open an address book. Look, I'm not going to use Launchpad. I'm just going to type ADD <laughs> and press enter. Oh, God, Look there's all my phone numbers. Oh, Close this. Whoa. Close this. <laughs> oh, I made a bad mistake. I am so um, sorry. Braga, you're fired. <laughs> I knew there was a reason I never opened an address book. <laughs> Jesus. This is a disaster. Um, any more questions from the chat, Nick? Um, they're they're, they're kind of laughing. Are they just calling right my now? cell phone now? I, it's not well, vibrating over we'll there. See. Wow, my face um, is red. 
We're going to have to edit this before it goes <laughs> on the internet. Someone is wondering uh, if they're going to make any applications to allow AirDrop to work with, like, Windows, for example. Would that, is that theoretically possible? I would say that probably we will not see a Windows AirDrop integration anytime soon, given the fact that the FaceTime client for Windows is still not quite yeah. out and uh, other things. It, it, I, I don't know nothing about how the spec works. It could be that it's something really easy and somebody will be able to reverse engineer, kind of like they have with AirView, uh, but I, I wouldn't expect anything uh, major on that front. Uh, what I would expect is that at some point you'll be able to transfer files between your iOS devices and your Mac so that if you're, say, someplace that you don't have an internet connection, mm -hmm. working on a file, you need to email it to somebody. Instead of having to pay $10 for the for the internet, you'll be able to just blast it over to the phone and then email it from or there. Or from your, your own phones. Your yeah, yeah, or, or the other way. Yeah. What I thought was kind of interesting is you can kind of do that with um, OS X Server, and that you can actually hmm. pull. Uh, I was reading that you can actually get stuff out of Pages and some of the other official Apple apps mm -hmm. um, via some app, I guess, that comes with Server. Hmm. But interesting. Uh, I wonder if that'll ever make it to the... I guess it's also kind but of... But it probably doesn't work in an ad hoc way either. Yeah, probably yeah. not. Uh, any more questions from the chat, Nick? Anything else we want to talk about, too, while I'm... While I'm... Well, there are also some iCloud features that are going to be built into yeah. OS X Line. That's not active yet. Yeah. It's not activated um, until full version of Line comes out. Yeah, um, so find my Mac. Um, I'm assuming you'll, you'll have access to all the other iCloud stuff. Just has to flip the switch. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of it. That, that's the high point. I mean, that's, those are the highlights. Yeah. We'll, of course, have more OS X Line coverage on Tested in the not-too-distant future. Uh, any more calls or questions from the chat, Nick, before well, we mean, sign off? I actually I asked the chat for questions. They said they could just call you themselves now and ask. So they okay. Don't, they don't want to use this channel anymore. Well, we'll just sit here and kind of wait quietly for somebody to call the phone number. It's 415-508-3975, or just Skype us at whiskeymedia.com. Uh, what's your favorite feature, Matt? Favorite feature, um, I can see myself using AirDrop a lot, actually. Um, really? If only because it, I've tried like Bluetoothing files to people in the past. Mm -hmm. um, that never and works. It, it never works. Yeah. It never works. And even trying to connect to other people's Macs always seems kind of finicky. This just seems like a nice you know, way to shoot something over to someone really quick. Norm, what are you excited uh, about? Versions, I think okay. that's something that I'm going to use a lot. Yeah. Cool. My, only, my only gripe with versions is that um, it seems like a lot of the apps that I use might not you know, include versions into mm -hmm. the, you know, like I can't see any of the Adobe Suite ever really including versions. I can't see right, you know, maybe. Oh, right I think right Adobe Suite will definitely you include think versions. It, really? it depends on the, I mean, video stuff obviously, you know, is going to just work. I guess uh, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, when you use Photoshop, you already have layers, you, have the you already history. have the history. So, yeah. I mean. I think they'll just integrate that so that you can use mm -hmm. the cool Wayback Machine <laughs> view of the of the version stuff. Um, Anything that you, uh, any uh, gripes? It any looks complaints? like, well, I think Nick has a question. Yeah, Brad is telling me if I don't ask his question, I'm fired. Uh, he wants to know if there's any info on how you'll be able to back up the download from the App Store and do a fresh install. There is not any info about that yet. Uh, there's a limited amount of info about volume licensing, so if you're a business and want to, and, and have Macs in your business and want to roll that out to a bunch of people. Yep. Uh, they've, they've said there will be volume licensing. It's unclear what it's going to cost, when it's going to be available, all that kind of stuff. I would expect that we will see a period of exclusivity in the App Store uh, before that happens. And, and there, you know, just like with Final Cut Pro t uh, 10, Final yeah. Cut Pro X, whatever it's supposed to be called, uh, we talked about this on the podcast a few weeks ago. There are big problems for uh, people who are working in corporate environments that have managed computers and stuff like that, yeah. installing apps from the App Store because you know the, the App Store is tied to your personal yeah. iTunes account, mm -hmm. not, not the IT department. Yeah, which is which is going to be a problem. The one uh, thing I think they said they were going to do is they were actually going to provide separate keys for, um, I guess, each of the volume licenses. Okay. Which, you know, I don't know, kind of dopey, but I guess it's a decent solution. I, I mean, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that is, that if it works like the developer release, there will probably be a file on the machine at what sometime. This, when you install this, it actually does put a partition, a hidden partition on the hard drive that's like uh, four gigabytes or something like that. Almost exactly the same size as the, as the download. Mm -hmm. That so. being said, I mean, I'm almost positive it's pretty trivial for you to take that file and put it onto a USB stick or a yeah. DVD, and we'll, we'll show you how when, when Lion comes out. As soon as we have the final code, yeah. yeah. So, uh, any more questions from the chat, Nick? Um, yeah. Overwatch asks, where will Apple's OS go next? Will OS X one day just become iOS, and will Apple, in, sort of in the long <laughs> term, you, you just end up with one operating system? I, I mean, I, I don't know I what you so. guys think. I, I, I mean, I think we're merging. I, I think they're over the long, long term, like 10 plus years, Yes, phone hardware is going to become more capable. Desktop hardware is going to become more capable at a similar pace, and they're going to kind of get to a point where everything's more or less the same. Hey, like Windows 8. Oh. <laughs> don't 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 start that kind of trolling, Chan. 
Um, I, I think the more interesting question now is about the App Store. You know, is Apple really, Apple seems very serious about making the App Store the way to get applications on this platform, and they're going to take the long, the long view at it. Uh, one of the things that's happened with, uh, by, by making this version of the OS only available through the App Store is that everyone will have the App Store if they want to keep current on, on OS X on their Macs. So, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, to Apple, they're willing to take a five or ten year route to making this happen because the benefits to them are huge, obviously, if they make it work. Uh, I guess we have time for maybe one more question and then uh, we'll call it a show. Yeah, um, someone's wondering if in AirDrop you can send one file to a bunch of people at once or do you have to manually, like, can you create hmm. groups or do you manually hmm. have to send files to individuals? I would guess that it's manually one, to individuals. One to yeah, it seems like it's one-to-one -one right now. We, we, don't have, we only have two machines with, with Lion on it right now, so, so uh, as we get more, we'll test that out and let you guys know. Maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, screen Vinny asks, is screen sharing still built in? Oh, yeah. It is. I heard the voice in my ear. Um, and it's the same. as It's actually a little bit easier before you had to kind of browse to it in the Finder yeah. uh, and then do something. I'm going to see if I can screen share with you right now. Uh, I do not have your password, so that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I can connect to the guest account, though. Uh, one of the other things that is interesting is, by default, right. there's a guest account built in. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if, say, Gary Witta is a friend of yours, uh, I actually have turned you off the guest account. Disable, yeah, yeah. Uh, if Gary Witta is a friend of yours and you don't want him to be able to use your Twitter and stuff like that, then uh, you know you can you can use give him the guest account and it essentially treats it. It's kind of like the Chromebook in that regard. You have a profile that just d gets wiped every time it's logged out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm connected. Uh, the screen sharing is not working for you. You might have it turned off. Oh wait, no, no. no I I think uh, when screen sharing is enabled, you have a thing up here that says share yes. screen with, yeah. uh, and and we don't have that turned on right now. So we can turn it on quick. Uh, I don't know what spacebar preview. Vinny wants to know if spacebar preview works the same. Oh yeah. I don't know what spacebar preview is. I've never used that before. Oh, yeah, that's uh, quick look. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the, okay. That, so that we'll thing. go to the desktop icons folder and. Wow. I had. I didn't know that, that was a thing. Hey. Yeah. That's you a, didn't know. No, I had no idea. Yeah. It's kind of nice. And if you do it on MP3s, MP3s. Are you can play, play movies in there? Yeah. That's crazy. Totally. It's great wow. when you're trying to go through like you know a whole bunch of music. Learn something new. Tested. Every day. Wow. Hit the down arrow. I'm going down. Yep. Nothing's happening. Oh, oh, no, click back into the Finder window. Okay. You're in preview now, that's why. And it's just a... Okay. Spacebar. Oh. No. Ah! ah! This is why live demos are always a bad idea. Now down. Oh, my God. Hey, okay. playing a video. This is fantastic. Wow, okay. I, I'm going to... I know what I'm doing the rest of the day. Today, Will learns about features that have existed since yeah. Leopard. So this is a quick look at OS X Lion. Uh, we'll have more OS X coverage on Tested, of course, as, as you know, things come to light. Uh, for Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See I'm you Matt. Guys. Oh, yeah, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time.